Hello friends, welcome back. My name is Marcio. In this video, we're going to have another nice tutorial, this time about how to write unit tests for our Java applications using JUnit 5. So you'll be learning how to write those tests, why you should be writing those tests, and what we are getting from those tests after we write them. And in the end, I'm gonna give you guys the whole summary of what we have done. So stick until the end. And without further ado, let's deep dive on it. As you guys can see here, I have my project here, which I have created using my IntelliJ Community Edition and also using Maven. This is the default structure for Maven and we'll be using the same structure for our project. So we have here source main Java, which will hold all of our source code. And we also have the tests here, which will hold our tests. So let me start creating the application here, which is gonna be a simple calculator. We'll be doing some addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And I'll be writing tests for those methods, and then we can build up from there. So let's start really small and simple, and then we'll build up from there. First thing here is I'm gonna create a new package. It's gonna be called model. That's gonna hold all my model or all my domain classes. I'm gonna create my calculator here, which is a plain Java class. And now we can start writing our code for our calculator class. First method here that I'm gonna create is gonna be a method to add numbers. And it's gonna be public int add, where I'm gonna receive two parameters, two integers, a and B. And in the end, I'm simply gonna return the summation of those two numbers. So one plus one should be equal to three plus three equals six and so on and so forth. I'm gonna now use our client application here to invoke that method and let's start doing some play around with that method. So I have a calculator here and I'm gonna instantiate a new calculator. Now I have that instance and I'm gonna simply print the result of that calculation. System out prints alien and I'm gonna invoke calculator add one plus one. So two parameters here. And let's run this method. And of course, we will be receiving two, as you guys can see here, because that's the proper result as we have been doing the summation here, A plus B. It all works, but I'm not comfortable with leaving my code without coverage. And someone can change this code here at any time and I will never note what happened. Only after it goes to production and something breaks, then I'll be alerted. So I don't wanna that. One thing here is I'm just modifying the method here to add one extra one. And now it should return three. So that's gonna be one plus one equals to three. So that's not right. Now we can start writing our tests to cover our methods. There is a trick here that IntelliJ has. Simply click on the class name. There will be this menu here. You can click on the menu and create tests. So the JUnit 5 is the default and the test class is gonna be the class's name plus test the suffix. This is the pattern JUnit 5 uses. I'm just gonna hit OK because I'm happy with the configuration. And now I have here a new test class. As you guys can see, it simply created a new test class under test Java. So this is the pattern. And now to start writing code for our test, that's quite simple. What we will do is simply writing a Java code to test another Java code. And that is exactly what we're gonna do right now. For doing that, we need this annotation here for JUnit at test. We are indicating to JUnit that's gonna be a test method. And then we can start writing our code. It's gonna be void because it's not gonna return anything. And one big point here is to always give the test method a very nice and descriptive name, a name that express what the method is testing. In this case, I'm gonna call it should add two numbers. Anyone who reads this method knows that it should add two numbers. So that's quite simple and clear. Now, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna instantiate the calculator here because we need that instance in order to test. And then I'm gonna just grab the result for the calculation. So calculator add one plus one. And now is 
when the fun starts because we will be starting using all the JUnit stuff and now we can do the assertions which is the core of JUnit. The assertion is we will simply make sure or we invoke a mechanism from JUnit to check if what we expect is what we got from the method invocation. And that is what we're gonna do right now. Should be assert equals, this is the JUnit method, and then we will provide two parameters. The first parameter is the expected variable or the expected value. I expect one plus one to be equals two, and then I say, JUnit, please uh, confirm this testing, this expected value against my result. And I can run it again. And of course, it's gonna fail because I did something funny inside my method. As you guys remember, I simply added plus one. So it's returning three, which is wrong. I can go back there and fix the problem. And it's gonna be A plus B, no extra one. I can go back there and I can run the test again. This time it's gonna be green because one plus one is equals to two. So it's pretty simple. That's the all the basic testings that we'll be doing. Uh, we'll be following the same pattern as I showed you guys here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and implement the other methods and then I'll be adding the tests for those methods as well. Let's go back to the calculator and let me add another test for subtraction, subtraction, and same thing, I have two parameters, A and B, I'll subtract B from A. Uh, likewise, for the multiplication, I'll be multiplying A times B, and I'm just gonna return A times B. And the last one that's gonna be our division. We'll be doing exactly, or something very similar two parameters, and then we will return the division A divided by B. So that's all the basic four operations that I have implemented here in our calculator, which are add, subtract, multiply, and divide. It's pretty cool, pretty neat, it's quite simple. And now we can start writing more tests to cover our code in here. Let's go back to our test case or our test class and let's write another test for the subtraction. So we need the at test annotation again. And now I can simply write another test method or another test case, which I'm gonna call it should subtract two numbers. And it's always good to keep following the same naming pattern as well. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna instantiate a new calculator here and I'm gonna use the result for that subtraction. Um, let me subtract, I don't know, six subtracted two, should be four, and another assert equals, I'm gonna expect four out of result. And we should be good to go. Let me run this method here, and let's see what's gonna happen. Again, it passed, and yeah, because six minus two is equal to four. I don't know if you guys noticed, but there is an optimization here that we can make. As you guys can see here, we are instantiating the calculator class a few times and we need to be instantiating it for each method. And we can do something pretty cool here and not having this whole repetition here. Let me cut the calculator here and I'm gonna create an instance variable here inside our JUnit test. So we're gonna have this instance variable here and now we can use that instance variable instead of creating a new instance inside each method. But we still need to have that instance before we execute each of these test cases and we are going to do that using another annotation that's gonna be before each, which are indicating to JUnit before you run a test method, please run this method here because I need to prepare something for the test method. And we're gonna call this method setup where we're going to instantiate the calculator here. So instead of keeping repeating ourselves over and over and over again, we can do it 
only once inside this setup method here. Another small optimization or small cleanup you can do is simply not to use the result variable here because uh, we don't really need it. We can simply cut here and use the method invocation result as a way to make the assertion. Let me do the same thing here and we don't need this variable here, which makes our code way better and more readable and more concise as well. And just to see if I don't mess anything up, I'm gonna run the whole class here, which we have two test cases and yeah, they are still passing. So I'm just gonna proceed here and create the other two test cases. So that's gonna be another test, void, should multiply two numbers. I'm gonna say a search equals. Let me see, um, I can try two times three. So it's gonna be six and calculator multiply two times three. I'm gonna also write the other method here for the division and that's gonna be void should divide two numbers. I'm gonna divide 14 by 2, which should be 7. Calculator divide 14 by 2. We should be good to go. Let me run all the test cases again and let's see the result and let's see if it's all good. Yeah, it's all good here. All of our tests have passed and we have covered everything or every single method we have in there. Another thing that I want to show you guys here is how to run tests with coverage. So we will be able to see in the IDE how is our testing coverage. So it's quite simple, just click here on the test class and there is an option here, run calculator test with coverage. Let's click on that option and it's gonna run and also will be presented with this option here where it says what is the coverage. Right now I have a coverage of 100% because all of my methods, they have been covered by my unit tests. I can show you guys here if I comment, for example, let me comment the last test case here. And if I run the test with coverage again, test with coverage, we will see that that coverage has decreased. Yes, it has decreased to 75%. So it's a great tool. It's a great uh, indication of what we are doing and if we have missed something as well. And let me go back here and restore the method. Now we can simply keep calling from our client here because we made sure that everything works. Add subtract eight by three, should be five, and also multiply two times six, 12, and divide 10 by two, should be five. And let's run again, and our client can call our API the way it wants. And yeah, multiplication divide. Yeah, just made a typo here. Let me run again and should be good now. Yeah, so two, five, 12 and five. So one plus one, two, eight minus three, five, two times six, 12 and 10 divided by two equals to five. Okay, now our client here, and they can try to do something fancy and use our class in any way we have not foreseen. And I'm gonna do a test here. Let's say our client wants to divide zero by zero and let's see what's gonna happen whenever they try to use this method this way. And of course we get an arithmetic exception because we cannot divide zero by zero and that's exactly the message here divided by zero. Uh, one way to fix this is just go back to the method here and for example, if a equals to zero and b equals to zero and throw new arithmetic exception saying you cannot divide zero by zero. Yeah, there are many ways of doing uh, and throwing exceptions, but I'm not going deep diving on that because I'm just gonna show you guys how to simply handle the test case. And this is one way of doing that. We are simply handling that edge case. Uh, we should handle all edge cases for 
everything that is failing. And if I run that test again, you guys will see that the exception I get here or the message is what I am catering for inside the method. Now, I have to write a test case for that. So I have divided two numbers and I'm going to write another test case here. It's going to be what should throw arithmetic exception. Let me copy the name here so I won't mess anything up when dividing by zero. And now I can start writing my expectation here. If something happens or if I hit that case, then uh, I expect an arithmetic exception to happen. I'm going to paste here the, the method body and I'll be explaining to you guys what all of this mean. The syntax is simple. I'm simply expecting an arithmetic exception and the variable name is going to be thrown. And from JUnit, I will say assertions, assert throws this exception when I use my calculator and I divide zero by zero. The message that I receive should be this one. And then I do an assert equals that this is the message that I received from my error message. And if I run it again, it should be good. And yeah, this is the edge case we are handling now. So now my summary here, as you guys could see, unit tests, they are extremely important. Uh, in despite of the fact this case here or the class I'm, I have showed you guys is something quite simple, but we can come from here and build up to more complex things. We should always be writing unit tests for our applications because it gives us the safety and gives us the peace of mind that anything or everything that we wrote and everything that it is in production, we are 100% sure they are compliant with all the requirements that have been asked for the application to do what it's supposed to do. So again, always write unit tests. Unit tests are extremely important. And what we get out of them is peace of mind and the certainty that the code is doing what it's supposed to be doing. Okay. I hope you guys have enjoyed my video. Please do not forget to click the like button, also subscribe to my channel and also click on the notification bell so you will not miss any of my videos. And I see you guys next time.